Welcome to this free immigration help channel. Today I am answering some more of your questions regarding the extension of stay. Uh, it is a very popular topic of discussion. I have been getting a lot, a lot of questions regarding filing the form I-539 for the extension of stay. Uh, obviously due to the situation that is currently going on with the airports, a lot of flights being canceled. And stuff like that so so far I kind of wanted to explain you what I did I did a video specifically where I walk you through the application process basically this application this is a paper application but there is a, also an online way to do it which is much simple much more simple much faster uh, so I do have a separate video for that uh, and then I did answering questions volume 1 and then I did answering questions volume 2 and now this video is volume three. So if you have any questions at the end of the video, put them in the comments below. And one thing before we start, I wanted to mention is that if you are replying to my answer in your comment, I am not getting those notifications for whatever reason. I don't know what's going on with YouTube, but if you have additional question on top of your question, ask it in a separate comment so that I do get notification and I try to get to all of them. Okay, I have a lot of them today. Let's get straight into it. So, the very first question I have, very good one. If no response is received from USCIS before the expiry date of visa granted is end of six months, so how long one can wait and stay beyond visa expiry date in US for a response from USCIS or depart to the host country immediately? So basically, I got a lot of similar questions basically let's say you applied for the extension of stay and you're still waiting and your status your duration status here in the country expiring it's expiring in the next week but you still did not receive the response regarding your application what do you do okay here's the the best answer that I can give you because there is no definitive answer so I'll try my best if you can go back without risking without waiting for the answer from the immigration services and go back to your country uh, without breaking that duration of stay duration of the, that status right let's say you have that I-94 until for example, June 20th, right? June 20th is the last day and you have to leave before June 20th. And you have applied back in May for the extension of stay, but you still have not heard back from USAS. If you can go back before June 20th, do that. Do not take risks because there is always a chance that USAS can deny your application. It, it really most of the times most of the applications especially now with everything that is going on there are very legitimate reasons to extend the, those stays so most of them are approved right even though they are delayed but but there is still a risk and you don't want to be in the situation where you waited for your extension of stay to be approved and instead it is denied and now you already overstayed your visa and your extension of stay was denied it not a very good situation to be in so if you can't go back do it now if you don't have other options obviously that right there answers your question because well you don't have other options so you just have to stay and see and wait and hope that everything go through and that your application is approved so that's that's the best answer that I can give you regarding that very good question unfortunately I, I wish I could give you something more definitive regarding that but this is just the way it is if you watched any of my videos you know that I always try to give you the safest right less risk possible way to go about whenever it comes to immigration process okay let's move on to the next question where can I locate the travel document number? My aunt got her visitor visa October of 2019. I've searched and I'm told they are in red letters, but everything on hers is black. Okay, travel document number will be on the travel document. So a lot of times people don't have 
a travel document. Travel document is a specific document to certain individuals, most of the times immigrants who live here. And let's say they have a residency, right? Uh, or they have a refugee or asylum status. And their passport, obviously from the country where they immigrated from, is no longer valid. So they apply for that travel document in order to be able to travel with it, showing it instead of the passport. So basically it's a temporary passport for immigrants that is given to travel around. So that number will be there. So in this case, uh, if you if you don't don't have that, if you don't have the travel document, obviously you're not going to have that number, so it's not applicable to you. Uh, so don't 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 worry about that. Just if you if you have a space, a blank space, you're filling out the application, and there is something that does not apply to you, you can just put not applicable in there or none, and that should do it. Okay, next question: What if you are not only applicant? What if you're extending it for yourself and wife? I assume you will have to file forms I-539 and 539A. Do you have to pay for two people or one since it's joint? Excellent question and I got similar, a few of those. Uh, yes, if you are doing it with somebody, you can definitely use the form I-539A. Basically, it is exactly like that. The only difference is there is another part in the very beginning that where you enter the information of the main applicant and then everything else is for that second applicant, basically. Makes the process much easier. Now, in the official USAS instructions, which you can find, I'll put the links in the description below. These are the official instructions. Read through them just to kind of give you, you know, brief understanding. Uh, the instructions do not mention the fee that is required however however you still might need to pay for the second applicant biometrics fee because most likely the biometrics will be required where you go and you do the fingerprinting taking pictures uh, if I'm not mistaken it's an $85 fee so you might need to pay so my best advice here what you can do is uh, what you should do you should try applying online because whenever you are applying online whenever you're filling out those applications before you submit those applications it tells you exactly how much you need to pay so there is no confusion regarding the payment so you're not gonna overpay you're not gonna underpay obviously you don't want to do either because that will slow down the process it most likely will delay the application so Start with the online, it will tell you exactly how much you need to pay. Uh, but, but again, according to the instructions, there is no additional payment for the form I-539A. Okay, let's move on to the next one. While applying for I-539, they ask a question. What date are you requesting your current or requested status be extended until? And current situation flights are canceling every month by month, so what can, can be done? If my I-94 is expiring on July and should I ask for three months extension or I can ask for more because I don't know when flight will resume. Great question. Very good question. Okay, so um, most of the times I-94 is given for six months. Whenever you're entering the country, most of the times it is just automatically given for six months. Sometimes it happens very rare, strange cases when it's given for three months, one month, two weeks, I saw those two very weird, very rare cases. Most of the times it's six months. And that's what uh, typically your extension would be. So even if you are requesting your extension for say uh, three or four months, you most likely will be given six months. So just go ahead and request six months and you should be fine, you know, because in this current situation with all these flights being canceled, nobody knows when uh, when they will start working again. I just spoke, I, I believe it was last week, with um, our airport here, International Airport, uh, Customs and Border Protection people, and asked them what's going on, when it's going to be open, and they said they have absolutely no idea. So even they do not know when the international flights are going to open up in our airport here. But, you know, it, it really depends, really different from state to state, but just request it for six months and, you know, m max it out, right? You should be good. Uh, and even if you did, even if you already applied and you requested for less, like I said, most likely it will be extended for another six months. 
Okay, let's move on to the next one. I have a question Monday. Is it Monday? Mon. Uh, I guess it was my. My i94 expires tomorrow, June 19th. Can I ask, can I still ask for the extension of the visa even after the expiration date since I did not know if I should ask for extension? Absolutely 100% do it literally immediate. Do it right now. Just just go right now. The video, my video where I explain exactly how to fill out this form. It's it's probably four videos before this one. Uh, do it as soon as possible. So if your uh, I-94 expires June 19th, tomorrow is June 18th. Today is June 17th. So you still have couple days it is definitely very late because instructions they do tell you that you need to apply at least 30 days before but again it's definitely understandable you know a lot of people did not know they did not expect their flights being canceled uh, make sure to mention all of that in the written statement you will learn about the written statement in the video that I did specifically explaining the process uh, just make sure to explain in detail why you did not know what happened and you know your flight being canceled and that you had a flight and all of that and just do it definitely definitely do it before june 19th by the end of tomorrow please do it don't wait okay let's move on to the next one informative video thank you very much appreciate it we applied for extension for my parents initially in december 2019 for the visa expiry in february 2019 as we had kid and wanted to travel considering the six months extension first time is ending in august 2020 and no commercial flights open to india and my parents being senior citizens and my dad having diabetes i feel it's risky to send now can I apply for extension for both my parents second time for six months? Do you think we will face issues later next time they have to travel like visa denial or major issues? Any case, I feel health is very important and senior citizens being very sensitive to this pandemic will USAS consider on humanitarian grounds to extend? Absolutely, definitely. Um, I do not think there should be any problems at all with the second extension. Um, I've seen a few cases where it was extended three four times actually four times uh and it did not cause any problems because circumstances happen especially now i keep repeating that you know with this pandemic all this whatever's going on flights being delayed canceled it's definitely definitely understandable and on top of that you do have a very important reason as well you know you don't want to risk your parents health so just make sure to mention all of that in your written statement whenever you're filling out the application and you should be fine don't take my words as a hundred percent guarantee because unfortunately there is no 100 percent guarantee with usas it's really up to them uh there's even less guarantee with embassies uh unfortunately you know embassies they have the mind of their own Sometimes they just like to deny things for no reason, no good reason. Uh, so that happens. But, but, overall, regarding USAS, definitely should be fine. They, sh they should be considered regarding that. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, question. Uh, quick question. I applied for my extension on May 15th. My visa expires on July 11th. If I don't have a response by then, am I allowed to stay or do I need to leave? Any help? Much appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you're very welcome. Um, so, again, really good question. And I got a few of those. And like I said in the very beginning of this video, if you can leave, in this case, by July 11th, so you have a little bit less than a month, but if you can go back and if you still do not hear from USAS, by july 11th and if you can go back do it do not take the risk however if there is no way for you to go back you don't really have any other options so yes of course you will you will have to stay and we will have to wait until your application is there is some sort of response hopefully approved hopefully okay let's move on to the next one my mother-in-law in my mother-in-law's visa is going to expire in a couple of weeks and we are applying for the extension just today as we were thinking we would be able to leave us in the 
evaluation flight. My question is, would this affect us negatively by any chance, given the extraordinary circumstances? Uh, the application itself for the extension definitely not going to have any kind of negative effect. Uh, it really shouldn't, you know, especially if, you know, it was like a previous question, if we consider uh, your parents, for example, in this case, going back to the embassy to apply for another visa, um, especially considering the circumstances, especially considering the circumstances. Um, a lot of times they might have a question, say, you know, you go, let's say your visa expired, but you had an extension and then you go to the embassy f to apply for another visa. They obviously see that you had extended your stay. Um, they might ask a question, you know, what was the reason? Why did you extend your stay? Not necessarily a negative thing, uh, especially if you have a good explanation, you should be fine. Uh, and of course, in this particular case, all of you guys have a very, very good reason. Flight, absolute mess. So it should be fine. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Hi, I am on B1, B2 visa. I came to US in February 2020. I'm not able to find my I-94 arrival departure record number to fill my I-539 form. I entered all my details to get my most recent I-94 on the web and it says no record found for the traveler. And when I entered same details on view travel history, it shows my recent arrival day. Can you please guide me how I can find my I-94 departure record number? And if not, can I leave that option without an, any entry? Very, very good question. And unfortunately, I had a lot of these uh, similar questions. People are not able to get their I-94. And the reason for that is because, unfortunately, the official website, the i94.cbp.dhs.gov, I will put a link in the description below. This is where you obtain your I-94 records. Is not very good. It's just not a very good website. Um, and regarding the records itself, before they used to give you a card with the number there, they no longer do that. They just enter it electronically. And the problem is with international names, you know, officers that are sitting there in the airport, whenever they put that record, obviously they are in a rush, first of all, because they wanna get people, you know, through. So they enter the details and with unfamiliar names that sound unfamiliar to them, they a lot of times make mistakes. And if there is even the tiniest mistake in your name, unfortunately, you won't be able to pull up the I-94. Just terrible. I know it's just terrible. So uh, a few things that you can do is you can try calling. Um, U.S. Customs and Border Protection and see if they can help you locate and the contacts would be here, contact CBP, which just another evidence that the website is not very good. As you can see, it's not loading. And I have been trying to do this today pretty much all day and this page is not loading, unfortunately. So if you're watching a few weeks from the upload of this video, try it, maybe it will work, maybe you'll be, you'll be able to contact them. But in this particular case, uh, with this question, it's pretty urgent, right? You know, if, if, you, if you have your status expiring soon and you're not able to pull up your I-94, just do it without it, you know, because you don't want to wait and try to get your I-94 number and not being able to get it and not being able to file your application on time. It's much more important to file the application. And then if, you know, USAS has any additional questions, they can contact you or try to find it themselves. But at least you file the application because it's it, this is much more important priorities. Right. Uh, but I will put this website in the link in the description below. Uh, unfortunately, this this is just the way the system is. Hopefully, it will be up, updated, changed sometime soon to kind of get rid of these problems. Okay, let's move on to the next question. E file I five thirty nine B two. This is the visa type. When I tried to review, 
upload preparer and entrepreneur signature file is gone and signature for applicant is only for type cannot upload it's okay to continue submit and pay after upload files and not go back okay sounds like there might be some technical issues there uh, if you are having technical problems and if you are not sure that the application was filled up correctly or incorrectly or something is missing from the application I, I would recommend trying first of all a few different browsers seeing if that solves the problem if you have any additional time come back to the application you know a couple of hours later and see if because technical problems they might happen you know if there is an issue with the server with USAS servers it will be because that's that's what it goes through uh, so it's better to be safe than sorry you don't want to file a, an incomplete application because that will definitely 100% delay your case and you don't want to do that uh, so if you have a chance to verify try a different browser uh, wait an hour or two and then go back to the application and go through it again and see if everything went through and was uploaded do it okay let's move on to the next one i filed the i-539 online for a b2 visa stay extension about a month ago before seeing this video i, I filed the i-539 online for a b2 visa stay extension about a month ago before seeing this video i left blank the questions that did not apply instead of putting an a will this impact my application is there any way i can edit it do you have any update on processing times for b2 applications thanks you're very welcome okay so um let's see i539 online okay so it was filed online um if you have watched any of my videos you know i always say that it is very important whenever you're filing the application don't leave blank spaces put in if it's not applicable put not applicable if there is none put none don't leave blank spaces uh, through just basically experience observing other people and what's going on with their applications it seems like USCIS is not that picky whenever it comes to online applications so in, in this case it was a five i539 online so that should be fine you shouldn't worry about it, it should be fine uh, with paper applications however USAS is more picky and if you send the paper application leaving some stuff blank there is a chance that this application might come back not a end of the world not a big deal basically what happens is everything you send it come back it comes back to you the same way uh, and it just has a, an additional sheet of paper on top telling you the reason why your application was not accepted and it says basically there that you left spaces blank just go through this application fill out those blank spaces was not applicable and send it back really not a big deal the only problem with that it, it slows down the process delays the process so you don't want that so if you if you're filling it up now don't leave blank spaces basically okay all right uh, next question in the same question it was uh let's see is there any way i can edit it after you submit the application after you pay online there is no way to edit it but again in this case don't worry about anything because that's online you should be fine and uh, another question in the same question do you have any update on processing times for b2 applications typically it takes about a month for the applications to process for pretty much all of the um, visa non-immigrant visa extension applications so one month uh, for four weeks most of the times however however because of the current situation because of the way USAS works now they are a bit overloaded obviously because it's not just you know one two person uh, <laughs> a day files for the extension is probably you know thousand two thousand people five no just you know I don't know how many people file I'm just giving you an example because everybody filing for extension of stay now because of the current situation and not only that uh, obviously USAS they had some uh, you know um, they had some of their offices closed so processing times will be longer so I would expect them to be probably at least double okay uh, so if you're if you're still waiting for two months that's just the way it is uh, one good way to go about it is uh, 
get your receipt number. Uh, whenever your application gets accepted, you do re receive uh, a letter that your application was accepted. There is a receipt number there. And all you really need to do is just go to USAS.gov official US Citizenship and Immigration Services website. And as you can see, there's this big announcement thing. And check case status right here. You click on that and then you enter your receipt number, which I do have some example one that I let's see what it is. Click to check status and some kind of application that comes up. So yeah, basically we'll tell you where, where you are and uh, how it is processing and, and what stage of process. Okay. So let's go to the very last question in this video. Uh, Let's do it. My mom came to visit and got stuck here. She wants to apply for I-539 extension because she, because the airport in my country is closed. But she does not speak English. Can she apply through my email and my USCIS account? Thank you for your help. You're very welcome. Absolutely, you can definitely uh, file her application through your own um, online USCIS account. Basically, USCIS online account is does not have to be individual specific, right? So if one family member is filing for, you know, five of his or her relatives, he or she can use their online account to file all of these applications. Uh, in fact, you will see the option to whenever you complete the application, you will see the option where you can create additional applications in one account and then just pay for whichever to have them submitted. So yes, you can definitely do that. Okay, so done with the questions for this volume three video, uh, we'll be uploading it right now within the next 15 minutes. Um, also, I wanted to say thank you very much, guys. As you can see, this channel finally reached 1,000 subscribers. And uh, now I have the ability, because I became a YouTube partner, I have the ability to do live videos, which I will start doing soon. Soon. Uh, <laughs> and um, I will be doing them around somewhere around this time, which is closer to evening right now it's like 9 30 p.m here uh eastern time and that's usually when i will be doing them i'm just trying to figure out technology wise how to make it in the same format as this videos where i have you know the screen here in front of me with usas and obviously a little bit of myself so if you have any questions um you will be able to join the online video and just ask me in real time whatever questions you might have and i will be answering them right there to the best of my abilities and of course probably worth mentioning that this is not in any way a legal advice i'm not a, an immigration attorney this is literally just coming from my personal experience from the experience of people that i know who went through immigration process and of course as you can see i am relying on official usas.gov us citizenship and immigration services website where you can find all of the information that is needed regarding your immigration steps so thank you very much for uh watching if you have any questions as always drop them in the comments below and i'll see you guys in the next video